Hey guys, Yulia here. So today I'm going to show you one of my projects that I've been working on for a few years. So the design process started uh, about two years ago and the installation actually started last fall, which makes this garden about a year old. And there's a wonderful couple that lives in the house with two young children and their wish list for the garden was quite long. And I think we incorporated most of um, the wish list considering that the space was not that large. Anyway, before I start, I just wanted to show you some of the before photos of the same space. So you kind of have an idea of the layout and the size and what was there before we started. This is the view as you enter the garden space and you see that Japanese maple there. It was so beautiful, we decided to leave it. Uh, this is the side back view of the house. And on the left here, you could see the uh, Rose of Sharon or Hibiscus Syriacus. It was all over the fence line. It sort of took over the property. You could see the fence was uh, actually pretty dilapidated. And right uh, in this image, there is a uh, maple again in that center. So kind of remember that maple because it will appear a lot in the video. And here we are. Uh, this is the garden now. Um, as you walk in, you sort of see some of the garden, but there is a shed on my left here that the homeowner actually built from a kit herself. And I will put all the links to everything in the garden in description down below for you to check it out. But the first thing I want to talk about is this uh, walkway right here. This is a winding walkway, but it's also very geometric. And those 90 degree um, angles create these little pockets, little spaces for different plants and all sort of creates like little garden rooms. So the first space um, that it created, it's this space right here. And we actually weren't sure how sunny it was. So the homeowner decided to plant some uh, angelonia. And as you can see, it did pretty well. That means that there's um, a lot of sun here. Um, so we decided to plant as a focal point this native fringe tree. And fringe trees are so beautiful, you guys, in the spring. And even right now, there's a really nice texture, texture and also has great fall color. The fence was replaced, as you can see. And as we move um, right along here, there's a small space here. Uh, that has tough stuff hydrangeas that have been blooming all summer long. Uh, she's very happy with them. There's some dicentra and there's some pansies that she planted for some uh, fall and winter interest. And on your right, you could see the maple. Um, and we decided to leave this tree, of course, because it was um, just a gorgeous multi-trunk specimen, beautiful structure, it was in great shape. And I wanted to give it its own little garden space with all these shade tolerant perennials and we even included some boxwoods for evergreen interest in the winter. There is some sweet woodruff, some hakina cloa, and um, again there's um, little green velvet boxwoods, tiarella, polymonium, um, stairway to heaven, and I will include uh, the list for all of the plants in this garden in the description down below. So if I miss something, you could just look it up. The polymonium is gorgeous. I absolutely love that plant. It blooms with bl beautiful blue flowers in the spring. There is a walkway that goes um, to the right of the garden and I will show that uh, area for you later. Uh, here is the main patio and the patio size is about 12 by 40. So it's a pretty large space and uh, it has two zones, the living zone and the dining zone. Now, right next to the seating area, there is a water feature here and it's just beautiful, has beautiful soothing sound. Uh, right here, right next to the house, um, there was a bed here originally and we decided to leave it to sort of soften up the wall. Uh, but if you decide to put a, a flower bed next to the house, make sure 
that you have a drainage that is uh, just right because you don't want any water going into your basement. Um, now, another reason we decided to leave this is because this space receives uh, quite a bit of sun and the homeowner really loves her dahlias, so she planted these dahlias here. This one is um, American Dawn, and it's planted together with Thomas Edison, and I think they look so good together that purple is just picking up uh, right there in the middle. During the summer, this patio is actually very sunny, and we were trying to come up with a shade solution for this space. Uh, first option was a pergola, but that was actually quite expensive. So we decided to go with four cherry trees that will eventually develop these beautiful canopies. Of course, spring blossoms and it has a pretty good fall color. And they also provide a lot of structure for the garden. It's sort of your ceiling in this outdoor living space. One thing I forgot to mention that everything uh, except for the large trees and shrubs in this garden was planted by the homeowner. So I created the um, master plan, the planting plan and the plant list. And she just started this some plants from seeds. Um, some perennials we ordered, but she planted pretty much everything herself, which is unbelievable. Now, um, as we move in the dining area, right here behind the grill, there is a hyacinth bean vine growing on the fence. And I just love that because it creates this softness for the space, but it also creates this blurred lines between her and her neighbors. Uh, her name is her neighbors have these beautiful trees right there but it creates uh, an illusion like it's almost their trees um, the next layer for the hedging here is these fine line buckthorns they have this beautiful texture and actually amazing fall color um, and right here this bed is just so beautiful it's also quite low maintenance so these are some hydrangea uh, paniculatas together with penicetums. This is a very low maintenance uh, combo that I use a lot in my designs, but it creates this beautiful uh, composition here. This right here is abelia, and people underplant abelia. It's a wonderful shrub. I should see it more in the gardens. That is a cephalotaxis, is also underplanted, um, sort of taller pillar like evergreen. And uh, right next to the fence, there is a chameleon plant, which is a weed. And she's been fighting with it for so long. Uh, there is a root barrier that she had to put in so it doesn't invade all the beds. So no garden is without problems, of course. Uh, in this space, um, this is sort of like the play, the beginning of the play area. And we decided to include this Nootka cypress, which is an absolutely whimsical tree. It al almost feels like it has a personality of its own. It's a little bit struggling because we planted it in the summer. So um, a lot of times plants go into a bit of stress, but it's going to be okay. This uh, lamb's ear is actually silver carpet. It has a smaller leaf. Um, then there's this hydrangea right here. This is Penny Mac. And it's just, this is the second flush of blooms, but it also has beautiful aged blooms as well. This corner here, which is the play area, actually has a lot of root competition from nearby trees and ton of shade. So whenever I encounter a situation like this, I just go with viburnums. Viburnums <laughs> are such tough plants. So this is one of the viburnums uh, that we decided to plant. This is uh, blue muffin, and it's underplanted with some uh, snake root right there. And here is a play area uh, together with a compost pile. 
Um, and the back of the garden we decided to leave fairly simple and just plant um, a row of skip laurels. And I'm sorry about the sun, you guys. It is right in the afternoon, so it's kind of right in the camera here. Um, anyway, we planted um, just skip laurels again to create those uh, blurred lines because the neighbors uh, have this beautiful redbud tree and that just the simple hedge of skip laurels was sufficient for the uh, back of the fence. Um, there are some shrubs right here that we decided to leave, uh, original plantings. And right here in the corner, there's another play area for the kids, but we decided to leave this one without any structures. There's just a little picnic table here, but sometimes kids just want to play in the dirt and gather some sticks, and that is just enough. Um, this tree right here is black cherry tree, which is an incredibly valuable tree for wildlife. Uh, a lot of uh, people think of them as garbage trees. I absolutely love them because they're so important for the ecosystem. And this is the secondary seating area. This is the fire pit area. And it is heavily planted with plants all around because the homeowners wanted to have this enclosure from the rest of the garden. Um, as you can see, the, um, we left pretty open lawn for the kids to play, but this particular uh, part of the garden is just so rich with different plantings. There's a lot of layers, there are trees, there are shrubs, there are perennials and some seasonal plants. And I know this is going to be edited heavily over the years because the homeowner is a gardener and garden is never done. So um, just to show you some plants, this is um, Nine Bark Tiny Wine uh, and it's like burgundy dark leaves. This uh, dahlia right here is Crichton Honey gorgeous warm colors of the dahlia. Um, this dahlia in the background there is labyrinth and on the right there is another Thomas Edison. And again, this garden is going to evolve as the homeowner's tastes change and uh, family changes and kids grow up. But right now, this garden is full of flowers. There are grasses, there are perennials, there are dahlias. And I had to include some um, geranium roseans here because every garden should have a geranium rosean because they bloom for a very long time. Now, um, I forgot to mention the area under the cherry trees. It's actually underplanted with um, Nepeta Junior Walker, and the homeowner already bought some alliums for the following spring. And can you imagine having that beautiful combination of the Nepeta and alliums under the cherry trees? So gorgeous. Uh, also, this is the side of the seating area um, from, from this side. And the surface of the patio is bluestone, which is a fairly common material in our area, uh, but it also goes really well with older homes like this one. Uh, let me quickly talk about the water feature here. And I think every garden should have a water feature, not because they're beautiful, they're soothing, sound, uh, the reflection of the water, but also for the wildlife. So we know birds use uh, water a lot in the garden, but also insects. People forget that insects need water too, and a lot of times bees, when they collect nectar, they actually stop um, and drink some water. Okay, and now let's take a walk in one of my most favorite parts of this garden. This is sort of the wildish part. And there is a shade garden on um, the right here. Um, and she actually added some more plants like this Hakinakloa and Eucara and Sun King Aurelia. And earlier she planted some Calamagrasis uh, brachytrata right here, which is one of the few shade tolerant taller grasses 
Um, they're actually quite hard to find. And this combo right here, which is Verbena bonariensis and Pinicetum, is just beautiful. It's this airy texture. And um, this area is packed with plants. And she already planted some uh, foxgloves for next year. I can't wait to see. Uh, there is a father gilla, which is a beautiful native shrub. Um, if I don't mention something, it will be in the description down um, below this video, you guys. This here is uh, Kalaminta, uh, together with more dahlias. And of course, the Caryopteris is in full bloom. There's some more dahlias here. There's some more Penicetum. The back of the fence is um, planted with a lot of hydrangeas. They're mostly paniculata. There's, look, you see the monarch butterflies? They're just flying all over <laughs> here because this is just pollinator heaven right here. This here is a Cafe Ole Dahlia, everyone's favorite. And as you, you saw that left just now. <laughs> um, as you walk through the path, um, you see the Caryopter is pretty tall, uh, but I love that feeling walking through the garden. Uh, this is a beautiful variegated dogwood that we decided to include in here because of its light color. Um, this is quite shady spot here. And I also gave her some elephant ears from my garden. Um, this part right here is, um, again, a little bit of a shade garden together with some pieris, some ferns, some elephant ears, and the combination of the bold leaves and the finer, t finer textures of other plants um, just looks so beautiful. There um, is a uh, brunera right here that is beautiful silver color on the perennial there. There is some Joe Pye weed pollinators are attracted to it as well. And I wanted to show you the lawn. Uh, so we decided to leave a lot of lawn space for the kids to play. They're still fairly young, but um, lawns and kids sort of go together. <laughs> um, again, beautiful layering of the plants. I just wanted to show you this um, labyrinth dahlia up close. Isn't this just beautiful? And all of these plants are just tall and beautiful as you walk through this garden, you sort of immersed in nature. Um, and this beautiful walkway with the gravel and some stones. Um, also wanted to show you this uh, phantom hydrangea. This is one of the panicle hydrangeas that has uh, really, really large panicles and they look sad for the first couple of years but then they become stronger and don't flop as much. Uh, again, more grasses, more plants. Um, this stand right here is of anemones and I really wanted them to bloom for this tour but they're not blooming yet. Um, and also the views of this garden is pretty much Everywhere you look is beautiful, and that's something to remember when you design your own garden. Don't just concentrate on one view. Make sure that you have beautiful uh, things to look at from every angle. And right here, the anemone is trying. It's trying to open, but not yet. Probably next week it will have flowers. And uh, again, this is the shade garden. On this side, when we entered the beautiful walkway, there's some more shrubs, some more perennials. The garden is packed with plants. It's just um, a riot of different textures and colors. And this is the shed, again, that she built herself uh, from a kit, where she stores all of her garden uh, um, equipment, garden tools. And, you know, as gardeners, we need space to store all that stuff. So this is pretty much it, you guys, 
for this garden tour. I hope you got some inspiration. I hope you liked this garden. And thank you so much for watching. Thank you.